Suppose that you are a grocery store manager and you are trying to find a way to increase the volume of your sales. So you decided to perform an analysis to identify the items that customers usually purchase together. So you may plan to place these items close to each other in the store. This way there is a high possibility of customers buying the second item easily when they come in to buy the first item. You may also plan to place these items in two exact opposite corners of the store so that the customers walk through the store as much as possible giving them the chance to purchase other items. No need for all of these bubbles. We can all conclude that identifying the items that are frequently purchased together is the main way to increase the volume of the sales. And it's our mission throughout this video. I am Khuloud Ibrahim and I am talking about association role mining using a priori algorithm. Association rule is simply a rule that is telling if event A occurred, then there is a high chance that event B will also occur. Just like the if-then statement in a programming language. For example, if the grocery store customer bought butter, then there is a high chance that he will buy milk too. In this case, we can say that butter and milk is an interesting association. This is the grocery store transactions dataset. And our target is not to find all the available associations in this dataset. Our target is to find only the important associations. But what's really meant by an important association? And how can we determine if this association is important or not? Or is it important enough or not? There are three evaluation metrics that are commonly used to determine the importance of an association. Support. Support simply represents the frequency of a certain association, or it can be interpreted as the probability of occurrence of a certain event. So the support of Apple is the probability of having Apple, which is the number of transactions containing Apple over the total number of transactions. And the support of Apple and milk is the probability of having Apple and milk, which is the number of transactions containing both Apple and milk divided by the total number of transactions. To generalize, we can define the support of X and Y as the number of transactions containing both X and Y divided by the total number of transactions. Confidence. Confidence is telling, given that event X already occurred, how likely will event Y also occur? The confidence can be interpreted as an estimate of the conditional probability, the probability of Y given X. So the confidence that milk will be bought given that bread is already bought equals the probability of milk given bread, which is the probability of both milk and bread divided by the probability of bread. And as the probability of an event is equivalent to the support of this event, we can convert the whole equation to be the support of milk and bread divided by the support of bread. So in general, the confidence that Y will occur given that X already occurred equals the support of both X and Y divided by the support of X. But we have to mention that there is a major drawback of using the confidence metric. Sometimes the confidence metric misrepresents the importance of a certain association. To understand this drawback, let's calculate the confidence that milk will be bought given that soap is already bought, equals the support of both milk and soap divided by the support of soap. This is 75%. It's really a very high confidence, but it makes no sense. There is no meaningful association between milk and soap. Here we got a very high confidence because milk individually is very popular. It appeared in 6 transactions out of 8, and hence it appeared in most of SOAP transactions only by random chance. To overcome this issue, a third metric was introduced. Left. Left is the ratio of the confidence to the expected confidence, and the confidence is the probability of Y in the presence of X while the expected confidence is the probability of Y in absence of X, which is simply the probability of Y. If left equals to 1, this means that the probability of Y in the presence of X 
is the same as the probability of y in the absence of x. So x has no impact on y. In this case, we can say that there is no relation between x and y, and an association between x and y is only by random chance. If left is greater than 1, this means that the probability of occurrence of y in the presence of x is greater than the probability of occurrence of y in the absence of x. So this means that y is likely to occur as x already occurred. This one is an interesting association. If left is less than 1, this means that the probability of occurrence of y in the absence of x is greater than the probability of occurrence of y in the presence of x. This indicates that y is unlikely to occur as x already occurred. So x and y are happening interchangeably, just like two brands of the same item. So the left of x and y equals to the probability of y given x divided by the probability of y, which is the probability of y and x divided by the probability of x multiplied by the probability of y. And again, we can use the term support instead of the term probability. So the left will be equal to the support of both x and y divided by the support of x multiplied by the support of y. Summarizing what we have covered so far, we mentioned the three matrix to evaluate the importance of an association. Support. Support answers the question, how popular is our association? Confidence. Confidence answers the question, how likely will event Y occur, given that event X already occurred? Left. Left answers the question, how confident are we about the association rule? Then we would expect, just by random chance. Now, after understanding the matrix used to evaluate the importance of N association rules, the grocery store manager can determine specific requirements for the rules needed. We need support of at least 50%, confidence of at least 80% and left greater than 1. To achieve these requirements, we will use a priori algorithm. A priori algorithm is a fundamental association rule mining algorithm, and it's based on a golden rule. All subsets of a frequent item set must also be frequent. This rule contains a key word, frequent item set. An item set is simply all the items in a certain association. And an item set is called the frequent if it satisfies the minimum required value of the support. If you look carefully to this rule, you will find that it makes a perfect sense. In our case, the minimum required support is 50%. And the carrot, for example, appears in only 12% of the transactions. Is there any chance to find an item set containing carrot and appears in more than 50% of the transactions? Of course not. This will never happen. In this case, we can just discard the carrot and we won't look at any association containing it. This will massively reduce the complexity of the algorithm as it reduces the number of the required iterations. A priori algorithm is composed of three main steps. The first step is to generate all the candidate item sets. And if the candidate item set doesn't meet the minimum required support condition, then it will be considered as infrequent and it will just be discarded. And this is called pruning. Then the item sets will be joined together, generating new item sets. And then we repeat. Let's apply a priori algorithm on the grocery store transactions dataset to understand more. Firstly, let's keep in mind the requirements of the grocery store manager. The support should be at least 50%. So the item set should appear in at least of four transactions. And the confidence should be at least 80% and left should be greater than one. The first step is to generate all the possible item sets of size one and calculate the count of transactions for each item. Then pruning will take place, and we will discard all the items that are having count of transactions below 4. Then from the pruned data set, we will generate all the possible item sets of size 2. Then pruning will happen again, and we will discard all the item sets 
that didn't meet the required to support. Then we will generate all the possible item sets of size 3. We will easily find that the item set of size 3 didn't meet the support requirement, so we'll discard it and stop our iterations at the item sets of size 2. Now we are dealing with two associations, but we should keep in mind that the direction matters. So we'll expand these two associations into four associations. Milk then bread and bread then milk, cheese then bread and bread then cheese. Then we'll calculate the confidence and left for each of these four associations. We will find that cheese then bread is the winner association. It satisfies the condition of support, confidence and left. Till this point, our target to identify the items that are frequently purchased together is achieved and the grocery store manager can plan very well to increase the volume of his sales. For more information about Aperiori algorithm, check out the links in the description below the video.